I'm Chef Reactions, and I've returned to the most miserable place on earth. Welcome back to Walt Disney World. This time around, we stayed at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, which is one of the original resorts that was opened the day that Magic Kingdom opened. In a lot of places, that kind of shows. The elevators were tiny. The rooms are kind of dated. They are in the process of upgrading all the rooms, not the one we were in, obviously. Um, and there's a bunch of construction going on to kind of bring it up to date. Our first night for dinner, we went to Kona Cafe, which is a table service restaurant. Meaning that you sit at a table and you get service as opposed to walking up to a fucking counter in a cafeteria and getting some cold fries. We started off with this bread, which was tasty. It had a little bit of sweetness to it. Um, however, serving cold butter at a restaurant is a crime. We got the California roll, the glazed chicken wings, and the pot stickers. Now, the chicken wings were good, albeit a little wet for my liking. The pot stickers were very tasty. I would give them an 8 out of 10. Um, I didn't actually try the sushi, but Mrs. Reaction said it's a step above gas station sushi. Captain Cook's is a quick service restaurant where you can mobile order breakfast. We got the Tonga toast, which is French toast stuffed with banana. It was fine, six and a half out of 10. Here at Disney Springs, came for lunch before getting into the parks today. It was like a big outdoor shopping mall. Just another place where you can fucking spend some money. We're gonna grab some lunch, do some shopping, and then we're going to Epcot this afternoon. We'll see. Fun fact, Disney Springs was once known as Pleasure Island, which is a great name for a swingers resort. Gideon's Bakehouse apparently has delicious cookies. I wouldn't know because look at the size of that line. For lunch, we went to Art Smith's Homecoming. Art Smith was apparently Oprah's chef. I don't fucking know. Regardless, we got deviled eggs, chicken biscuits, and grits. Everything was well seasoned, hot, came out quickly. I wasn't crazy about the chicken and biscuits. Would give it a seven overall for the establishment. One of the reasons I like Disney is because I'm a fucking logistics nerd. Like I'm not a Disney adult, but I enjoy logistics and how big places operate. The transportation options here are phenomenal. You got buses, you've got things called minivans, which you have to pay for, and then you've got the monorail. There's a monorail right now, actually. It's a super easy way to get around. It's free. It's worth it, would recommend. You also have the Skyliner, which is like a gondola system that goes between a bunch of the properties. That's usually closed for a week. Fun way to kill 10, 15 minutes just seeing all shit. It's also kind of scary, but. Out of all the parks at Disney, I would say Epcot is best suited for adults, mostly because there's tons of alcohol. Epcot has four festivals. It's got Festival of the Arts, Flower and Garden, Food and Wine, and I think Holidays. Christmas, whatever the fuck. Little known fact, Epcot actually stands for Every Parent Comes Out Trashed. Actually, it stands for Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow, but that's kind of fucking boring. This thing's a fucking ripoff. God damn. 10 bucks, 10 50. Here at Epcot, having one of our first stops at uh, the Festival of the Arts booth, got the carne asada. So it's 10.50 for sirloin beef, grilled queso fresco, nopales salad, queso fresco foam, and chicharron dust. This portion size is fucking terrible. For $10.50? No, it might be tasty. Let's see. Queso fresco, no bam. It's not worth 10.50, six out of 10. What's the seasonal margarita? Oh, right in front of my face. A margarita I said before i don't really drink when i do drink though it's something like a margarita margaritas for me are a 10 out of 10. this one eight eight out of ten <laughs> slippery in 1990 i was here with my mom and mrs reactions was here with her dad and we were here at the same time and we didn't even know it. a couple years ago we lost my mom and then this past year we lost mrs reactions father my father-in-law we come back now as a tribute to them and a way of connecting with them and if you got a problem with that We're here at the Painted Panda, which is one of the booths at the Festival of the Arts here in the China Pavilion. At Epcot, we got the Char Siu Pork Bun. It's $8.50 for some pork on a bow with uh, some slaw and a sauce. Let's try this sauce. Let's give it a little. $8.50 for this. 
for this, $8.50. Portion, not great. Pork is very sweet, it's under seasoned for sure. No salt on it, barely notice the slaw. The bun is okay. With the price, I'd give it a, like a five and a half. Wouldn't recommend really. Still gonna eat it though. Here in the Italy Pavilion is a great place to get a mask for your billionaire orgy. Here at the America Pavilion at a booth called the Artist Table. And we were here last year, we tried the hummingbird cake, really liked it. Instead, we got the duck and dumplings. Look, I'm gonna just get this out of the way for saying, whatever happens with this, this is on me for buying duck at Disney World. Try it out. It's got duck, it's got ricotta dumplings, it's got a jus and some root vegetable, looks like some turnip and some carrot, turnip, turnip. The duck is actually kind of nice, it's smoked. It's a little overcooked for how I like it, but it's fine. I would give the duck by itself like a seven, maybe a little generous. Try these dumplings. They're hard as fuck. They're over seasoned, which is strange for Disney World because nothing's over seasoned here. This whole dish is like a five, five out of 10. Would not recommend. If you have a magic band, you can wave it in front of like a bunch of random stuff and it does stuff. I don't know. The fuck? You better watch your mouth. It's called Fashion Bitch. Google it. Today we're at Epcot. We're only here for three days. So we've got two days at Epcot, one day at Magic Kingdom. Gonna eat and drink around the world, mostly eating though, because I don't really drink. Normally we start in Mexico and go all the way around clockwise. And I guess that would be counterclockwise. No, that's clockwise, whatever, it doesn't matter. We're just gonna fucking go all over the place. The name of the game is finding the shortest line and getting food from that food service operation because why? I don't wait in lines. Disney has four parks, Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Animal Kingdom, and Hollywood. Not going to Hollywood Studios or Animal Kingdom this time, but don't have enough time. If you wanna see some food from those parks, go check out my first ever YouTube video where we came here. Let's go have some fun. Fun is a relative term if you've ever seen any of my other videos. For breakfast, we went to La Creperie, which is one of my favorite spots in all of Disney World. It's a hidden gem. There's not too much difficulty in getting a reservation or just a walk up if you want to go in. We got a sweet and savory option as we tend to do and split it down the middle. Um, you can also mobile order, would give La Creperie a 9 out of 10. Here at the France Pavilion, Le Vin. The Chef de France. Accent's probably shit, but whatever. We just had breakfast at La Creperie. I love La Creperie. The galette is probably my favorite dish at Disney World. I'm a sucker for French food. We got the Grand Marnier slushy. It's $16.50 plus tax. I might be wrong on that. We'll overlay the price. This is a classic. They serve this in a Grey Goose lemon slushy. I love lemon. Decided to go orange today. Let's give it a shot. Oh, that is strong. It's like a alcoholic creamsicle. I, I compare a lot of things to a creamsicle, I feel like. If a creamsicle got hammered, it's this, seven and a half out of 10. It's strong, so you definitely get your money's worth. We just stopped into the Morocco Pavilion, which is, it's very well designed. I've never been to Morocco, so I don't know how accurate it is, but it's like, it's very immersive and it's very well designed. It's kind of a hidden gem. I don't think a lot of people come here. We found this little covered area to hang out for a bit because it's pissing rain. Shout out Florida for the shitty January weather. It's statistically the least busy time of the year, so that's why we come because fuck crowds, you know what I mean? It's still busy as fuck. There's lots of little areas where you can hang out and chill out and find a place to sit because you're on your feet all fucking day. So pro tip, sit down when you can. I don't know who needs to hear this in 2024, but if you're out in public and you need to cough, cover your fucking mouth. Watching this back now, I realized we didn't actually get any food from Japan. Last year we got the Katsu Sando, so you can check that out in the older videos. How funny would it be to just Godzilla this whole motherfucking village? <laughs> We're at Germany in Epcot. Uh, we went to Summerfest and we got a bratwurst that comes with sauerkraut and chips and a pretzel bread pudding. Everything together was $21. Let's give it a try. That's a lot of fucking sauerkraut on this thing. Look at that. Gotta hit it with some spicy brown. The bratwurst is 
it's fine. I prefer mine to have a little crisp on it. It seems like these ones were just like steamed or boiled. Seasoned decently. It does taste like a traditional bratwurst though. The sauerkraut is, is good. It's not too briny. Let's try these chips. It's a kettle chip with paprika on them. Bun's nice on the actual bratwurst, but like I said, I like a little bit more snap to it. 6.25 out of 10. I've had way better sausages, way better bratwurst. I wouldn't get it again. I'm trying the pretzel bread pudding now. I don't know what this is though. So. It's like a vanilla cream with some caramel on top and uh, bread pudding. I love bread pudding, so let's see how it goes. Making it out of pretzel is very interesting. I, I bet it's like just the ones at the end of the night that they don't sell. They then flip it into the next day. That would be the, that's what I would do with it because you soak up moisture and shit like that, but let's let's try it out. Da -da 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 dense. Get some of that cream on there. Cream me up, Scotty. Mm. It's kind of nice, actually. It's got a nice crisp on the outside. The pretzel on the inside gives it a different texture than a traditional bread pudding. It does have a, uh, a, a little bit of a salty element to it. You taste cinnamon throughout, very good. Salted caramel on top. I would give this one a 7.75 out of 10. Would recommend it. After walking around and eating all that stuff, I needed a break. So we hopped on the monorail and went back to the hotel for a bit, but I had to get some Dole Whip. One of the best parts about the Polynesian Resort is right here, the pineapple and I. I've had more Dole Whip than I'd care to admit, and I haven't waited more than 10 seconds to get it. I love it. Had to do a little bit of shopping at the merch store in the hotel. Every hotel has their own merch store. We bought some shit for the nieces and nephews, dropped it off the room, and monorailed it back to Epcot for the night. Here at another booth for the Festival of the Arts. This one's called Pop Eats. It's like near the Canada Pavilion, I guess, whatever. Uh, got a grilled cheese and a tomato soup in a can. It's $5.75. Not a bad price, considering the portion. You get half a grilled cheese, a can of tomato soup. This is an item that they have every year at Festival of the Arts, apparently. We didn't have it last year uh, because there was a huge lineup. No lineup today, so you know what that means. Chef's getting a fucking grilled cheese. Let's try it out. I'll try the grilled cheese by itself. Grilled cheese by itself is like a four and a half. The soup is good, actually. It's got a good seasoning to it. Um, it's got like a cheese foam on top, which is nice. When you dunk the grilled cheese in the tomato soup, it's obviously better. I'm gonna give this an overall six and a half. I like the soup, the grilled cheese is fucking whatever. You can skip it. At another booth at the Festival of the Arts, this one's called Gourmet Landscapes. I fucking hate the word gourmet, by the way. Like, it's so, I don't even know what it means anymore. This is, in the Canada Pavilion, which is actually shut down right now. So we can't even go in there, but whatever, shout out Canada. We got the wild mushroom risotto, which is risotto with wild mushrooms, obviously, fuck. Some truffles shaving, some parm, and a Zinfandel reduction, fancy. It costs $9.75, and it's a ripoff because the portion size is shit. Look, me getting a risotto at Disney World, that's on me, 100% on me. Risotto is one of my favorite dishes to cook. It's a simple dish, but it's easy to fuck up. It's not bad. Risotto's like maybe just a little bit under. The rice is a little bit under. Little heavy on the seasonings. Not the worst risotto I've ever had for sure. Definitely not the best. I give it like a, a seven, a seven out of 10. I wouldn't recommend it though, because it's like 10 bucks, not worth that. For a little snack, we got the maple popcorn also in Canada. Comes in this souvenir bucket that you can refill for cheap. 10 out of 10 would recommend. It's the four food groups. I love Monty Python, by the way. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, this is a phone booth. And back in the day, if you needed to call your parents and you couldn't find one of these, you were fucked. We're at Yorkshire, what does that say? Yorkshire County. Yorkshire. Uh, fish and chips at the UK Pavilion in Epcot. We got the fish and chips. It's 13 bucks, like 13.95 for one piece of fish and some chips. I've had this before. I really enjoy this. I really enjoy fish and chips. Like, I'll eat fucking fish sticks and chips. You know what I'm saying? Let's try it out. No tartar, no nothing. I think it's cod. What a fucking mess. They don't have knives. It's hot. It's crispy. It's tasty. Seven and a half out of ten. Fries. Fries are hand cut, I believe. Seasoned well. Would recommend, definitely. After that, back to the hotel fill up our refillable cups. Those cost $20, by the way, although the dude didn't charge us for ours. And we watched some fireworks before bed. We're at Sleepy Hollow Refreshments, Magic Kingdom. We were here last time. We got the chicken and waffle waffle. 
chicken and waffles. This time it's 9.30 in the morning and I'm getting a breakfast waffle filled with Nutella or hazelnut spread for copyright infringement. Nutella, banana, strawberries, and blueberries. Uh, again, it's 9.30 in the morning. I shouldn't be eating this right now, but it's a soggy bottom boy. Let's just try the fucking thing by itself. Waffle's fine by itself. It's like a, oh man, five. Everything together. Also, parents, if you get this for your kids, this is a surefire way for them to crash. Let's try this. <laughs> this in a coffee was 12 bucks. I would give it like a five and a half out of 10. You can skip it. Standing in front of Pirates of the Caribbean. I had never watched these movies before, like the last week, so they're pretty good actually. We've already been on six rides. Why? Because we paid an extra $23 each to get Disney's Magic Pass. I understand it's not the most affordable option, especially if you got a fucking family of six, seven people, but look, I've seen wait times up to two and a half hours. You're already paying a fucking hundred bucks to get into the park. Essentially, you're paying to wait in line. Nah, spend the extra couple bucks if you can afford it. Skip the lines, dude. I'm gonna be done all the rides by noon. We're at a snack cart just outside of Adventureland where they sell spring rolls. And a lot of people said, Chef, you gotta try the spring rolls. So I'm like, okay. And they have two different kinds. One's a cheeseburger spring roll. The other one is a pizza spring roll. You get two for $9.50 and I got one of each. Let's try the pizza one first. It comes with a little marinara. So... They're hot, that's good. A lot of times here at Disney World, the temperature of food is not great. You know what they say about pizza? It's like sex, even when it's bad, it's good. It's not bad. The uh, spring roll is crunchy. Pepperoni, mozzarella cheese, and oregano inside with the dipping sauce. I'm partial to pizza rolls. My mom used to get them when I was a kid. I could probably eat eight or nine of them. Try the cheeseburger one now. Cheeseburger one comes with like a mac sauce-ish. Mac sauce adjacent. So this one has ground beef, pickles, and cheese. It's not bad. I don't like hot pickles. I try them out for $9.50. Both are very well seasoned. I would give them an 8 out of 10. And keeping in mind, that's for theme park food. I'm not comparing it to fucking French laundry or anything. Would recommend. This is the new Tron coaster at Magic Kingdom. And ain't no fucking chance you're going to catch me going on this thing. I already want to puke and I've just watched it go by a couple times. Yeah, I don't like the fact that there's a fucking net there to catch people. That means that they've done the math and it's possible for somebody to fucking fall out. Uh-uh. I've had to switch a tire because it became very cold, which essentially defeats the purpose of being in Florida. Like, why the fuck am I here? This creepy circus area is easily the worst part of the whole Magic Kingdom. It's the only reason to go there is a fucking merch store. Thank you. I just want to, where can I put this to cut a piece off? There you go, sir. Thank you. Enjoy. That's the weirdest thing I've ever done in my life. I'm at Prince Eric's Village Market. For years, everybody's like, turkey legs, they're fantastic. You gotta try them, whatever, whatever. I'm not about to eat a whole turkey leg and walk around the theme park. So what I did was I asked a nice gentleman if I could have a bite of his turkey leg if I bought him his turkey leg. So I bought him a turkey leg. I just said turkey leg 45 times. Anywho, let's try this turkey leg. Smells good. It's salty. It's hot. It's got a, a, a little bit of smokiness to it, not a ton. I don't know how the fuck somebody eats this entire thing and goes on with their day. It's kind of dry. Four. Four out of ten. Get it if you like turkey legs, I guess. I don't know. I'm fucking turkey grease now. Be Our Guest is another restaurant that's in the Magic Kingdom. If you have kids, it's a cool place to go, but it's fucking expensive. We decided to get a bite at Casey's Corner, which is like made to look like a fucking baseball stadium. I don't know. Uh, it's on Main Street. We got the corn dog nuggets, which were were very good. I'm a piece of shit, and I love corn dogs, so I would give those an eight out of ten. I've not eaten enough Dole Whip. I've seen like 25 pounds of Dole Whip. What's gonna be your favorite? Well, we'll see after I try that one. I'm kind of embarrassed because I think they know me by name now. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great night. Have a great one. We're back at Sunshine Tree Terrace. Uh, this time. We got the strawberry Dole Whip, 575 plus tax, 619 including tax. I'm excited for this one. I've eaten a ton of pineapple Dole Whip, ton of vanilla. I tried the orange last time. It's time for strawberry. That's incredible. It's sweet. It tastes like, you know, kind of like that fake strawberry flavor, which I am a fan of. The texture's great, flavor's great. 10 out of 10, always with Dole Whip, always. Fuck.
look, Disney can be overwhelming and expensive, especially for people who have never been before. My advice is look for a good deal. Try to save as many places as you can and plan ahead. Don't come in raw. It's like quarter after seven. We're heading out. Fuck okay, it, we're done from the Magic Kingdom. There's fireworks at eight, but we can watch them from the hotel. There is no chance I am standing in that sea of people. No fucking chance. Check in and check out all happens via the mobile app, which is super easy. Grabbed one last Dole Whip for the road, and I swear I will never make another Disney video again. Bye.